Hey guys, Pablo with BND, and today Reddit story is called Dates from Hell. But first, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell notification sign to get updates every day of new videos coming up. Our first post is titled, My Tinder Date from Hell. Quick prequel, was dating this guy for a while, really liked him. Long story short, he said he couldn't see himself marrying me, but still wanted to date. So I broke up with him. Little bits of time went by, and I decided to get back into the dating pool via Tinder, even though I hate dating apps. Matched with this guy, Chad, hit it off via message. Good looking, educated, sense of humor. After a couple of weeks, exchanged numbers and continued chatting. Discussed meeting several times, but our schedules clashed. One day, Chad texted me and asked to Vimu me some money to treat myself to a couple bottles of wine. Sounds awesome, I oblige. Also asked if I'd like to come over to his house after work, since other people will be there, no pressure if I feel uncomfortable, etc. I actually didn't feel weirded out at all by this point, and I carry, so I agree. I bring the wine and my concealed carry and head over to Shed's after work. He's there and two of his friends. They all seem perfectly nice and normal. First weird thing. Four total kitchen cabinets are completed, ripped apart, smashed. This is a newer kitchen. Nice cabinets. I inquire about the damage and Shad says he was mad. So he punched them. Decide not to say anything additional about it. I grab an unopened beer for myself, then a coffee. Everything else is fine until I'm done with the coffee. One of the friends leaves, and a few minutes later, it's like someone has flipped the switch on Shad. He completely loses his out of nowhere, throws a metal bar stool across the house, screaming like a lunatic child, chucks his phone into the kitchen wall, remaining friend steps outside to smoke. Shed comes up to me out of nowhere and bites my leg. I hit him in the head and he stops momentarily and then bites me again. I hit him in the head hard as this time and he stops. I ask for the bathroom, he walks over to show me and I don't know how else to explain this, but quite literally hurls himself up into the air, into the hallway, and lands flat on his back outside the bathroom door. Shed then gets mad that he has hurled himself onto the floor and punches a hole through the adjacent wall. I politely excuse myself to the restroom in utter shock. Come out of the bathroom. Shed approaches me and starts crying, absolutely wailing, going on about how his father is sick, this is a terrible time on his life, blah, blah, blah. I'm ready to get the hell out, but I'm concerned this guy may actually hurt himself, and at the time, felt some sort of responsibility to try to prevent that. I calm him down some, Shed's friend comes back in, Friend suggesting we go fishing. Shad says he will, but would prefer to stay at the house, get to know me better. No way in hell. I agree to fishing so I can follow in my car and bell. Walk outside, Shad's friend gets into the driver's seat of Shad's car. I walk around and let the friend know I'll be following my car. He's cool with it. I get into my car, door still open. Shad realizes I'm not in his car, storms over and the man's bags I ride with then. is completely adamant, but I stick to my guns and refuse. He says to get the hell home then, and slams my car door shut. He then gets into the passenger seat of his car with his friend, and they drive off. I sit for a few minutes, calming down, processing, and pulling up GPS to go home. Start driving through the neighborhood. Make it around three corners and stop dead. Shed is standing in the middle of the road facing me. He runs at my car full sprint and slams both hands on the hood as hard as he can and runs them down like some sort of horror movie scene. He then walks over to my side, tries opening my door and rear door, screaming for me to open them. I decline. He punches my window, then the rear. I slam in reverse and floor it around the corner as he chases me on foot, slams the car back in drive and peel out of there as fast as I can. See the friend pulling back into the neighborhood and honk, but don't slow down. I heard him yell, sorry, as I drive by. The next day, 
Shed's friend found me on Facebook and messaged me apologizing, saying he has never seen that behavior before. Shed also texts me and tries to apologize, saying his friend told him he went psycho and he doesn't remember anything. I tell him he's lucky I didn't shoot him and to never contact me again. I have permanent bruises from the bikes. Okay, I'll be honest with everybody. I had to open with this story because I heard some crazy dating stories, but this one, this one takes a trophy. So I'll be telling you guys out there, you gotta be careful. There are crazies everywhere. This post is called Great First Date, Disaster Second Date. Some of my more recent history. About 10 years ago, I had had really bad experience. Definitely not my first though, with someone I was seeing. It turned out she was a compulsive liar and just not a great person all around. I ended that relationship for obvious reasons and decided it was in my best interest to take a step back from dating for a while because I wanted to focus on myself. I started working on cleaning up my credit and bought a house six months after I called things off with her. Two months after moving into my house, I decided I wanted to pick up a second job just to make some extra cash and cut down on my burden. I picked up a part-time at a fairly well-known drugstore and have been working there for about four months. Now on the point. I had a customer who came in from time to time and seemed really nice. She and I chatted every time she came in and I always looked forward for her visits. I have to admit to having a crush on her, but I try to remain professional at work and not hit on every attractive woman who comes into the store. Basically, I avoid being that guy. Recently, she decided to give me her number and I wasted no time setting up a first date. In my mind, she was everything I was looking for. Beautiful, well-spoken, intelligent, funny, and seemed to have her life in order. Our first date went really well. We met in an upscale burger joint I had never heard of, her suggestion. The food was amazing, and they had a great craft beer selection. We're at the restaurant for about two and a half hours, and neither of us wanted the date to end, but she had a prior commitment. Afterwards, she texted me to tell me how it was the best time she had had in a very long time, and how she couldn't wait to see me again. We decided right then that we would be going out the next night. One thing I learned during our first date is that she's originally from Georgia and has no family here, here being Indiana. This is somewhat important later in the story. The next day rolled around and we agreed on a local microbrewery pub. The plan was that I would pick her up at her place around 6, but I had to wait for a confirmation that her usual babysitters, her neighbors, would be willing to watch her kids for the evening. I finally received confirmation almost right at 6, and she also informed me that she would be meeting me instead of having me pick her up, in case she had to leave quickly to get back to her kids. I had no problem with that, so I had it that way. We both live about 10 minutes from the pub, but in opposite directions. I beat her there and got a table. I waited for about half an hour before calling and seeing where she was. She explained that her GPS had turned her around, but that she was back on track and would arrive shortly. Another half an hour went by before she finally texted me to tell that she had arrived, but it was another 10 minutes after her text before she walked through the door. As soon as she arrived, something seemed slightly off, but I couldn't put my finger on it. We ordered our food and beers and chatted for a bit. I kept noticing that she was looking off to the corner of the room while talking to me and would only occasionally make eye contact. The only thing in that part of the room was a TV with static beer menu displayed on it. It was not anything interesting. By the time we got our food, she was already starting to act strangely, and the next part took place over what couldn't have been more than five minutes. She seemed overly emotional and was starting to make very little sense. Her head started kind of swaying around a bit as she spoke, and she seemed to be having trouble focusing. I kept asking if she was okay, but she kept insisting she was fine, even though I could tell something wasn't very right. 
I tried asking about things we had previously discussed, like her job, to see if she was able to comprehend what I was saying. Her responses made no sense at all, and I was starting to get extremely worried. Suddenly, she started drooling and passed out in her chair. Obviously, I had no idea what was happening at this point, so I started trying to get her to come to and asked the restaurant to call 911. The paramedics arrived and started to ask me lots of questions, many of which I didn't know the answers to. Questions like, Does she have any medical conditions? Does she take any medications? Do you know if she uses drugs? I decided to follow the ambulance to the hospital so I could stay with her, as I obviously wanted to make sure she was okay. After spending some time in the waiting area, they allowed me to go back and see her. When I went back to see her, she was slightly more coherent than before and was on an IV drip. I asked if she had called her neighbors to let them know what had happened and she said yes and that they were going to be coming to the hospital. An hour or so later, I hadn't heard anything about any additional visitors and started getting concerned. I also start noticing an iPhone ringtone that just wouldn't stop. After some time, I realized she didn't have her phone. They had taken it and locked it up with her personal belongings because apparently we were in the psych part of the ER. I explained that her kids were with her neighbors, that I didn't know their number or where she lived, and that they were probably starting to get worried. They let me get her phone so I could answer it for her and, of course, was the neighbors. I spoke with one of the neighbors and explained the whole situation. He explained that they had to leave, so someone needed to come get her kids. This is where the fact that he has no family in the area comes into play. I told the neighbor they weren't going to release her yet and that I might have no choice but to pick them up myself. I took the phone into her room so she could give him permission to let me pick them up. I got the address from her neighbors, so I had it that way. Once I got the kids back to the hospital, I was informed that they weren't allowed to go back to see her, so I took them to the cafeteria for snacks and drinks, then did my best to keep them calm and vaguely answer their questions. Earlier in our trip to the hospital, one of the doctors had made it a point to ask me how much she had to drink, while on my side, it was literally no more than two ounces of beer, and if she had appeared drunk when she arrived at the restaurant. I answered his question and explained that she seemed a little off, but mostly normal when she arrived, but that things went quickly downhill from there. He seemed to accept that answer, but didn't elaborate in why he was asking. One of the nurses let sleep at one point that she was at 0.36 BAC. For anyone who isn't familiar, 0.08 is a legal limit for most states for driving a car. Based on some quick research, it looks like 0.35 is where you start flirting with disaster and can go into a coma. At around 0.40, you're in serious alcohol poisoning territory and could go into respiratory arrest. Once they released her, I drove her back to her apartment and had my mom meet me so she could help me pick up her car and drop it off for her. She did call the next morning, yesterday morning, to let me know she was okay, but haven't heard from her since then. I've not had good luck with dating, but this was far the worst experience I've had so far. I think it's time to take another year off. All right, guys, that's going to be it for today. Uh, we're already pushing the time, and those have been two really, really crazy stories. So, if you guys want to see some more dates from hell, please leave the comment below and let me know. Uh, if not, every day or every other day, I'm going to be looking up other crazy stuff on Reddit for you guys. Thank you very much and have a wonderful day. Goodbye.